Hey, good morning, everyone. It's May 12th, 2022. And I have a little, a little baby here with me. Huh, Bella? <laughs> She's never been in the shop. So we'll see how that turns out. You want to get out of here? Are you afraid? Look at her tail going. That means she's upset. What's that, a mirror? <laughs> All right, I got to keep my eye on her a little bit, but today uh, we're going to be, what are we going to do? We, gotta, we have to get these machines on wheels. It's the only way I can move this thing around. It is super heavy. The, um, the dust collector should be here today and maybe even the air compressor. And both of those machines are gonna be going back against that wall. So I need to take this, get it on wheels, move it over here in front of the bandsaw or off to the side, and then I can get wheels on the bandsaw as well. Maybe we'll even unpack that. Huh, Bella, how's that sound? <laughs> She's looking around. All right, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. All right, first things first though, we gotta take care of this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on blocks or bricks pretty soon, you know, bury some bricks down underneath, till all that up, put the soil down, and then we can actually have a little garden there. I think we want it a little bit longer though. That's pretty small. Um, I gotta get these tomatoes into the ground. These are ones I bought at that garage sale. They're starting to yellow up. I did water them last night, but man, they're dry already. If you haven't noticed, I don't really have a green type of thumb. The only thing I can grow good is weeds. And they're coming back already. And I just ripped them all out. Look how big this one got. Oh, this is like two days or three days. There was nothing here. And it just, I mean, that's crazy, right? These were all weeds. These weren't here. None of these were here. That's three days worth of growth. That's all right, I have a compost heap. I'm starting back here. Underneath this, I'm just throwing all the green stuff under there. I'm gonna mix some dirt in with it eventually. I just haven't, haven't yet. There's another strange kind of weed starting to pop up all over the place. Man, this is really dry on this side and I water it just as much as the rest of it. I'm gonna have to reseed, I think. At least we got most of the work done back here. I'm gonna go ahead and water it and then we'll, uh, we'll start the shop stuff. All right, where are we at here? So last night after I stopped filming, I went out to the Home Depot. I got some carriage bolts that is going, these are three and a half inch car carriage bolts. Now the problem is, once they get um, installed, they're gonna be sticking up about a half an inch. So I couldn't get three inch because then they would be flush, right? So the solution to this problem is to add a quarter inch shim between these two pieces of wood. So I have to remove this, plane down a piece of wood, quarter inch thick, put it in there, and then put this back. And then we'll have only a quarter inch so that won't happen anymore. It'll be down to there, okay? So we gotta make one, two, three, four, cause that's gonna be another cart. So I gotta get the planer all set up, make some quarter inch shims. We'll probably use some of this material back here or something. All right, this is an experiment. I'm running boards through the planer and this thing is probably about 75 to 80 decibels. It's probably right in that 78 range, which is pretty darn loud. You should be wearing ear protection if you're going to be around this thing all day. Um, I do not have ear protection in, but that's besides the point. What I want to do is I want to put, I want to start running this longer board through here. And then I want to leave the building, close the door and listen. So we're going to have to do this quickly. <laughs>
I mean, you can hear it. It's... You can definitely hear it out there, but it's not loud. It's barely annoying. Um, and that is going to be actually, believe it or not, that's one of the most noisiest machines that I own or will own. I think the planer might be, the, the bigger planer might be a little bit noisier, but yeah, man, that's, uh, that's good. The acoustic sealant between the drywall and the studs, all that extra time and effort putting that acoustic soundproofing in, it definitely worked. Um, this door, I mean, this is just insulation, like that rigid insulation. And man, that's, the metal is hot to the touch because the sun's beating down from the other side. But this is 72 degrees, just as we have it set. So that's great. All right, uh, we'll continue on this. We got to get these down to a quarter inch. And we're about, we're about a, at a half inch right there. Little ways to go, we're making some sawdust. All right, we're at a quarter inch here. Lily's over there ringing the bell. That means breakfast is ready. All right, I'll be back. Oh, cool. That is some sort of a cutworm moth right there. He'll be fine, the spiders will get him. We got some breakfast here. Mm. Oh yeah. Not sure if it's out of season or if he has any left, but Bubba, if you're watching, I have a little bit left. Best stuff ever. Bubba sent me some of this. He actually sent me two bottles. The first one's long gone, and I thought this one was gone too. Oh yeah. All right, well that was fun. Took a little while to, uh, you know, maneuver this thing onto the roller. Uh, however, it's still not completely on, as you can see over on this side. It's hanging off a little bit, All right? We wanna have an inch overhang over here, and we wanna have only one inch overhang over here. So we got about, you know, another inch and a quarter to go. And I could not, there's no way to maneuver this thing by hand. So I just took a piece of pressure treat, I tacked it on there, and I'm gonna use a clamp to move it this way. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And uh, that way we can center it nicely and uh, hopefully it works. Seems like the only logical way to do it. All right, well that took a while. And uh, I'll tell you right now, it's still not easy to move this thing around, but it doesn't really matter. It's a lot, I mean, a hundred times easier to move it now than it was before. And that's all I really wanted because this thing is not meant to be moved around. The main reason for putting this thing on wheels is to just move it right now from the, the position that it was in over to here until we get, you know, we're gonna have to move it around three or four more times, but there's no way I can move this thing by myself if it's not on wheels. So once this thing is permanent, which is gonna be right, right to the left of where the tripod is, that's pretty much where it's gonna stay um, once the shop is complete. It's gonna stay on wheels, it has a brake on it, it's not gonna move. Uh, and another plus about having those wheels, it brings it up higher. I'm six foot three, so it's difficult to have work areas that are lower. So everything that I have, including my computer desk, my kitchen table, um, every my you know my bathroom sink everything has to be higher because my back is messed up and I don't like bending down a lot so that's another reason why we lifted it up so we're gonna have to do this as well uh, I don't need actually maybe we'll do this first because I will need the bandsaw when I start putting in my jam my door jams so I, I'll need to resaw some stuff and uh, Maybe we'll uh, work on this next. Knock it all out. All right, not too bad. This was way easier 
than attaching this thing. Probably because the motor on this is three times bigger than what we got going on back here. So uh, yeah, all I did, I, tr I tried doing the clamping again, as you can probably catch from the time lapse, but I was like, man, if I could only hold it up somehow, I thought about you know in putting long, long screws in there to like lift it up, but then I was like, that doesn't make any sense. I could probably walk it in there doing that, but then I was like, oh yeah, there's a factory hook there for, you know, that's like usually the center of gravity for these things. And I just hooked that thing up to it. Yes, I know it's to the rafters and this rafter is not strong enough to hold this thing. But basically I put it up there to begin with just in case this thing was gonna fall on top of me, it would at least give me some sort of a warning. And so I just kept cranking it and it was lifting it right up. I was like, oh, well that's easy. So I'm gonna go ahead, I just pre-drilled the holes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna send some big old giant lag screws through it just to uh, attach it to the new fancy uh, roller. Now it's on wheels. We'll go ahead and attach these. And yeah, we've got both of our current big machines up on wheels. Now we just, we're still waiting on the air compressor and the dust collector. They were supposed to be here. They were at least supposed to let me know that they were coming and they have not yet. So uh, we're just waiting. So um, it's already about 4 p.m. So I don't know how much more I'm gonna do, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and finish this up. Oh, we could go ahead and now we can actually install these. This is pretty easy. We're going to take these out and we're going to install the soft close, um, soft close sliding hardware for these pocket doors. That's a nice, easy install. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll install the, the rubber bumper on the doors and we'll get all that stuff installed. And then we can actually start putting the walls up, the, uh, the plywood. All right, so before getting to the doors over here, I wanted to double check for level because I realized that these red wheels are a little bit bigger. I mean, not bigger, they're just, they're a little bit thicker. The metal and everything is a little bit more uh, robust compared to these other ones. So I wanted to make sure it was level and it wasn't. So I, I, go, I went ahead and lifted it up and I put this big quarter inch shim underneath. And now that's a little bit too thick. So we have to take this shim out. We'll thin it down on the planer and we'll put it back. We only need to take off, you know, a 16th at a time. But once this reads level, then we know that our entire machine is good to go. So this is just a common woodworking trick that I wanna share, in case you didn't know. This is just a bar of soap. It looks like that because it's about 20 years old. It just stays in my toolbox. Basically, if you ever have a screw that you're afraid it's gonna split something out, just um, jam some soap or beeswax, if you have beeswax, into the threads and that will prevent splitting. Still, I always like to pre-drill anyway, but this also helps a lot. Makes it go in easier too. See that? Good stuff. Great, we have the pocket doors installed. So once they close, they don't close very softly. They, I could install another soft close on this side to make it do like, here, I'll, I'll just show you. So when you open the door and you let go, it pulls it in just like that. So I still have to do the, the door jams. Uh, there's two door jams here, there's two up top, and then there's just a flat one here. Now, when I open it, it just kind of 
bangs up against it. I don't have a soft close for this side, but I don't want one. I'm going to go ahead and install a, a neodymium magnet into the door jam and over here, or just a piece of metal here and a magnet here or vice versa. That way when it closes, it won't bounce around and do stuff. It'll stay, it'll stay still. So yeah. So yeah, that worked pretty good. I'm happy with that. And uh, we got both doors installed. I think that's it for the day. We got these up on wheels. No dust collector, no air compressor today, but that's all right. We got, we, we made some progress. We got both doors installed with the soft closed stuff. Um, eventually I will install the little handles and stuff and the, all that. So not too worried about that. That could be a project for the future. I want to get rid of this plywood. I want to get that stuff up and we can start building French cleats, get all this mess up onto the walls. And yeah, man, got a lot of wood for the French cleats yesterday. Two bucks a sheet. Can't go wrong with that. Baltic birch, 11 ply, 5 eighths inch thick. Good stuff right there. The, not good stuff. That's the best stuff you can get. So I am happy about it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, you know what to do, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.